Number theory is a vast subject, but there's always those problems that don't fit into any category. We've explored divisibility, modular arithmetic, diophantine equations, but today we're going to be exploring some ideas that don't fit into any of those categories. Let's start off. So a palindrome is a number that reads the same forward and backward. For example, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1 is a palindrome. 7, 6, 7 is a palindrome, but something like 37 or 378 is not because the opposite digits have to be equal. For example, 7 has to be equal here, but in this case, both of these digits are not equal, so not a palindrome. Let's take a cool example using palindrome. Find the arithmetic mean of all three digit palindromes. And a palindrome reads the same forward and backward, like 777 or 383. So instead of finding all the palindromes and adding them together, let's find the average for every digit. So the first digit, it can't be zero. It's a three digit number. It can be anything from one to nine. Now, because it's a palindrome, the last digit must be equal to the first digit. That last digit must be equal to the first digit. So the last digit must also be the numbers from one to nine. So therefore, if, if these are the, all the possibilities then for the first and the last digit, what about for the middle digit? Well, the middle digit can be from 0 to 9. Now, the middle digit is in the middle. It doesn't have to be equal to any of the other digits because it's at the center. So it will be the same forward and backward. So in this case, for example, 606, the middle digit is a second digit reading it forward and backward. So middle digit can be anything. OK, so what's the average value of each digit? The first digit, well, the average value is 1 plus 9 by 2, 5. This, the second digit is 4.5, 0 plus 9 by 2. And the third digit has to be the same as the first digit, so just 5 again. So the average value of the palindrome in total, well, that's just going to be the hundredth digit times 100, the tenth digit times 10, and plus the units digit. So that's a 5, 100 times 100. right, for this digit, plus 4.5 times 10, plus 5, which is 500 plus 45 plus 5, 550. So we just multiply them all, all the averages for each digit to get the average palindrome. Pretty cool problem, but we're ready to move on to the chicken McNugget theorem. This is a, another kind of miscellaneous number theory problem, but it's also a really cool theorem. Basically what it says is the maximum the ma value that cannot be expressed as the sum of multiples of a and b is a b minus a minus b. So for example, let's say we have this problem here. How, what is the maximum amount of money that can be created with three cent and five cent coins? Well, for that, we would just apply this theorem. 3 times 5 minus 3 minus 5, which is 15 minus 8, 7. So 7 is the largest value that can't be created with 3 and 5 cent coins. What does that mean? Every number after 7 can be created with 3 and 5 cent coins. 8, 9, 10, 11, so on. They can all be made with 3 and 5 cent coins because 7 it's the maximum value that can. Cool theorem, huh? Well, let's use it in a, this an interesting problem that applies it. The town of Hamlet has three people for every horse. So horse, there's going to be three people. Four sheep for each cow. So let's say cow, sheep, 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 sheep. Three ducks for each person. Oh, so for each of these people, we have an additional three. Okay, so we're asked to find which of the following cannot possibly be the total number of people of horses, sheep, cows, and ducks. And the answer choices are, the answer choices are 41, 47, 59, 61, and 66. 
So which of these cannot possibly be the total number of people, ducks, cows, and sheep? And horses, of course. So the key thing here is that you can think of one of these units as a group. For every horse, there's three people. For every three people, there's nine ducks. In total, there's going to be a total of nine plus three plus one equal to 13 in this group here. And in this group, there's just five. So basically, we either, to have a cow, we also have to have four sheep. They're, they're like a package deal. You can't just take half of this group and be like, oh, we have one cow and two sheep. Not allowed. You either take the whole group or nothing. And you can take as many groups as you'd like. And there's kind of two kinds of groups. There's group one and group two. So we essentially have, let's say we have A of group one and B of group two. Then we have the total number of organisms, 13A plus 5B. 13A plus 5B will be equal to the number of total organisms. So we're asked to find what could not possibly be this number. Aha! Remember the chicken McNugget theorem? It states that the maximum value that can't be created with 13s and 5s is 13 times 5, AB, minus A, minus B. So mi minus each of these values here, which is 65 minus 18, which is 47. Aha! 47 doesn't work for sure by the chicken McNugget theorem. So 47 is our answer. Cool application. Now let's take a look at this cool example. The product eight times eight, 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 where the second factor has K digits. So we don't know how many eights are here. It could be one, it could be two, it could be nine, 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 who knows. Is an integer whose digits have a sum of a thousand. What is the value of K? So, the key thing here is to note that, I mean, it's eight times a bunch of eights. It's, it looks like something that we should try smaller cases for first. Let's just do eight times eight. 64, of course. What about eight times 88? That's four. We carry the six. Then six, eight times eight is 64, plus six is 70, so 704. What about 888 times eight? 4, carry 6, 6, 64 plus 6, 70, carry 7, 64 plus 7, 7, 1. Okay, so now what if we want to make it 8, 8, 8, 8, 4 eights multiplied by 8. So then, on this final turn, instead of carrying the 7, instead of carrying that, instead of putting the 7 as the largest digit, we'll carry it instead. Because now we don't just put it down. We put it, carry it to the next digit. So there'll be a carryover of 7 there. And then it's 8 times 8 plus 7. Which is 71. So 71104. And we can keep going. Now, oh, why do we put a 7 here? Because we have 71 at the end, right? So we put 7, 1. But if we add another 8 here, then we're essentially adding another 8 times 8 equals 64 term. So then that 7 will be carried again, and it'll again have a 71. So it seems like for each new 8 that we add, we're just adding another 1 after the 7. That, that is, of course, after the first few values. So now we're given that the digits have a sum of 1,000. Hmm. So what must be true for the digits to sum to 1,000? Well, we've got 7, then a bunch of 1s then a zero, then a four at the end. So seven plus, let's say, x ones, we don't know how many ones there are, plus four is a thousand. We can subtract 11 from both sides to get x equal to eight, eight, nine. So there's eight, nine, nine of these ones over here. Well, then how, what is k then? If there's the key thing, or, there's nine, sorry, there's nine, eight, nine, because a thousand minus 11. So there's nine, eight, nine ones over here. So then how many eights do we have? Well, first of all, 
If there's 989 of these ones and there's three more digits, then there's a total of 992 digits in the product. And if there's a total of 992 digits in the product, then how many eights are we multiplying? Well, notice here how the product has one more digit than the value. Product three digits, value two digits. Product five digits, value six digits. It's always one more. So therefore, this number must be 991 digit number. So 991 is our answer. Cool, isn't it? Looking for a pattern? And if you check out my meta solving video, we can learn how to approach this using engineering induction as well. And now we've got a bunch of miscellaneous practice problems because that is truly the best way to improve at miscellaneous number theory. So next off, we're going to move on to geometry. And geometry is actually one of the coolest subjects on the AMC. They've, you've got so many topics from circles, power of a point, cyclic quadrilaterals, angle chasing, and some other cool concepts like 3D geo, cross sections, and even things like Brahma Gupta's formula. And we're, we're going to be covering all those very powerful tools and concepts in the next part of this video series. You can click on that first part of geometry and click on it right there. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.